Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Crown of Ash by Card Noir. This plays one to four players, takes roughly 60 to 120 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Crown of Ash, you are playing as a vengeful necromancer trying to rebuild your kingdom, while other vengeful necromancers are also trying to do the same. Don't forget, there's also a citadel in the middle of the game map, which controlled by the king will result to power and dominance. Being able to control that is the most important on the map. Set out to place your warriors and your minions across the map, gaining resources, gathering more warriors, and defending locations. Every round you'll score points and attempt to push yourself along the game board up until the fourth and final round. Once you do so, you'll check to see who has the most victory points based on locations you control, based on different fighters you might have, and of course based on your fate card, which is going to be deemed based on the type of fighters you buy throughout the game. Will you become successful and gain control of the kingdom, or will you be left in the rubble? Find out in the game, Crown of Ash. To begin setup for the game Crown of Ash, the first thing you do is you'll take the main game board and set it down in reach of all players. After that, you'll go ahead and take the secondary game board, which is for your turn order and round order, and set that within reach as well. After that, you will then go ahead and give each player a player board. These are what they're going to use to place minions down and to utilize for their victory points, their graveyard, their uh, treasury, as well as discards for their combat cards. Each player is going to get four unique minions that they'll be able to utilize on the game board to gather more resources and do other fine actions. You'll start with two gold coins. The first player will start with the first player marker, and each player is going to get three fighter cards with their color on the bottom. Each player is also going to get five fight or combat cards that are all going to be the same for all players, as well as a certain number of location tokens or control markers they'll use across the game board. Give each player a 50 marker to symbolize once people have reached 50 game points, they can go ahead and start back from zero, as well as a round tracker. The last thing that they're going to need is a fate card. Make sure the deck is shuffled and each player is given one randomly. As for the main game board, make sure that every single fighter based on tier is shuffled individually and placed on the round marker. Then deal out these tiered fighters in the different areas, three tier one, two tier two, and a tier three. Put all of the resource tokens, as well as the larger resource tokens that add up to three, in each available space around that board. Each player is also going to be getting a marker indicating their turn order. You can go ahead and shuffle these randomly and place them down in the order. At the bottom of the game board, go ahead and take the tower deck. The tower deck is going to have tier one and tier two. Shuffle the tier ones and place them on top of the tier two, and then deal out four towers across the bottom of the game board. On the main game board itself, you are going to place the king in the middle, place the money on the very top, and place the dice somewhere within reach. Each player is going to be getting a random tower card, uh, the, or the token. These tokens are starter tokens and do not have a tier listed on them. Place them down on the game board, along with one of those players' location markers, a fighter of their choice of the power of one, and then you're pretty much ready to go. After you have all this set up and you have the first player marker assigned, you're ready to be in the game Crown of Ash. In the game Crown of Ash, players are going to be selecting on their turn one of their minions and placing it somewhere on the main game board or on their own in one of the different minion locations and perform one of the actions. The actions could involve gathering gold, fighting, attempting to buy a tower and place it down on the game mat, and other different things. When you've chosen one of your actions with one of your minions, you're going to pass your turn, and the next player will get a chance to go on their turn. And it will continue going like that up until the point in which players are going to run out of minions. Once no player has any minions, that will trigger the end of the round, and you will trigger all the effects of the end of round aspects, which is scoring, resurrecting, retrieving, and refreshing, and then you will once again rinse and repeat with the player who has the lowest score going and deciding the turn order. Once all four rounds have been carried out, then you're going to score once again and you'll gain bonuses for your fate card, uh, which includes your fighters, and anything else present on the game board. Whoever has the most points is the winner. To start the game, you'll select one of your minions and you'll get to place it down on one of the, resor one of the lo locations in the game board. The first thing you can do is gather a resource. You can take one of your minions and place it down in one of the spaces next to a tower. In a three or four player game, there are two spaces on some of them, and that is defined by a dotted line. Otherwise, it's just the main circle. You'll gather the resources based on the space that you are entering, and then place it into your treasury. If another player 
controls that location. So if I went to Blue's location and gathered their markers, the tower will have a tax, meaning that they will get a resource from the game pool and add it to their treasury. If you choose to add, it, uh, add your minion to your location, you will have the opportunity to switch out warriors and reallocate them in that area. So if I wanted to, I could take this guy back and put two new warriors out. All of the spaces around the game board, and you can see them based on color, have two warrior slots that you can exchange warriors onto. The middle space has three. The next action you could choose to do is you could choose to build a structure. Down below in the middle of the game board is the build and amend space. You can go ahead and select any one of the four towers that are available, pay the cost in gold associated with that, that tower, and then you can take that and place it in one of two areas. Either A, a space you already control, or B, a new location. If you select a new location, you'll be able to take one to two of your warriors and place it down onto that space. You're also going to gain the benefits, meaning the resources, from the tower you place on that location. If you choose to place it on the same space that you already control, you are going to gain the resources and have the ability to amend any fighters that you would like and change them. Changing fighters is important because it will give you more powerful strength units, and also, when you have the same type of units, you will gain a bonus at two and at three units of the same type. Type is listed on the very top of the card. Additionally, at the end of the round, you'll score for each of the locations. If you have a location with a value at the bottom left and any other uh, towers underneath it, you're going to score one point for each additional tower that is in the stack. The next thing that you can choose to do is initiate combat. There are a number of different combat spaces on the game board. Usually, there's going to be two for each of the different areas. However, there's also combat spaces for the Citadel. One of those spaces in the Citadel gives you plus one power, the other gives you minus, uh, minus zero, and then the final one gives you minus one. You can choose to place on either of the two left or right sides, but the middle space is always going to be open for any number of units just along with the gold and of course the build too. Uh, so you're gonna always have the ability to do those three different options. Finally is the ability to refresh cards. Throughout the game, when you initiate combat, you are going to be utilizing combat cards. And when you utilize them, they'll go into your graveyard. If you choose, you can place one of your units onto the space in the middle of your game board and refresh those cards by adding them back to your hand. Combat. Combat is fairly simple. You will select the location that you do not control and that is not empty, and you will initiate combat. You are going to be fighting against the defending warriors in that space, and you are going to be adding warriors from your hand, face down, up to two of them on the side spaces, or three in the middle, and then you're going to each add a combat card, the defender and the attacker. Defenders always win on ties. Once you've selected one of your combat cards, the next player as well will select a combat card, and you're going to reveal them. You're also going to reveal the warrior, and you're going to check the stats of all of your warriors, including possible bonuses, and the combat card's bonus. The combat part cards could range from 1 to 4 damage, it could be a die roll, or it could even be 0. The cards are going to have their strength, what happens when you win, what happens when you lose, and flavor. If you successfully defeat your opponent in combat by having five when they have four points, or by having four when they have four and you're the defender, you are gonna get the opportunity to place your warriors in their location. When you place your warriors, their warriors will go to their graveyard. You are then going to remove their control marker and you are going to add one of your control markers, symbolizing that you now control the area and the combat cards will go to the discard pile. And that's basically the idea of combat in the game, and it works the same for the middle. But if you choose to fight the middle when the king is there, you're just going to fight against a level five character, a five strength character, and you can use up to three to defeat it. Once you have chosen your minion and done one of these actions, you're passing. Each player will do that, and it will continue until all these guys are done. Once all of the units have been removed and placed down on the game board, you'll trigger the end of round aspects to the game. You will, one, score for controlled structures. Each of the areas that you control have structures on them as well as they might be stacked. You're going to get points based on the top left corner of each of these towers, as well as each, each t a card in the stack is going to give you plus one. So in this case here, I have a two with one underneath, making it three. And in this case over here, I have a one, which is just going to be one, two, three, and four points. And I would move my tracker on this board here. 
and every player would do that. If you control the tower, you are going to score points based on the round, based on the marker underneath in the middle of this game board here. In this case, for round one it's four points, two it's five, six, and finally seven. After you score structures, you're going to resurrect any fighters. All the fighters in your graveyard that have died, you're going to remove and put back into your hand. Then you're going to go ahead and retrieve your minions. All your workers are going to go back into your hand. And finally, you'll refresh any structure tiles. If there are any tiles left on the game board, and remember whenever you buy any of these things or access them, they're always going to be replenished. But at the end of the round, you will remove these structures, if there are any there, and replace them with new ones. The last thing that you need to know is at the end of your turn, you're going to have the option, if you would like, after you place a worker down and do one of the actions, to buy a warrior. Warriors come in three different tiers, tier one, two, and three. When replacing them, you're always going to replace them with that tier. However, you're always going to replace them with the next lowest tier whenever possible. So if the ones are gone, the twos will come out. When the twos and ones are gone, it'll just be left for the threes. Buying these units will give you additional strength on the top left. It will give you a type of unit, which could co correspond with your fate card. And they're also going to be giving you the cost and tier. This is how much it costs and resources to buy this unit and put it into your hand. And this is the marker or value of the unit at the end of the game. Higher tier units are worth more in strength and can be utilized in combat. So buying these guys is definitely going to be helpful throughout the game. If you run out of units, that's it. There are no more units left to buy. You'll go across these rounds, one, two, three, and four. And at the end of the game, you're going to trigger additional game scoring. One is going to be for resources. You'll get three points for each resource of the same type, and you will get two, one point for each two gold that you have. Finally, you'll score for your fate card. The fate card here is going to tell you two different colors. And for each of the warriors that you have of that color, you're going to score points based on their tier. Your starting workers have no tier, and our starting fighters have no tier, and thusly you won't get any points for them. But overall, you'll be scoring additional points for the workers that you've bought, or the fighters that you've bought throughout the game. That's basically how the game is played. Go throughout the game, fight, control area, secure resources, and use them to buy fighters, and continue trying to hold as many points of interest as you possibly can in the game Crown of Ash. So I know I did a huge info dump there, and this is basically the review portion of the video, but the idea is you take an action, you can buy a worker if you want, and then you pass. The actions range from just getting gold, one gold, which is usually not always the best decision, uh, fighting the Citadel, fighting anything around here, building, and then being able to return your cards. This game is all about building up your towers, your controlled locations, gathering the best fighters, and placing them in the areas to defend your control marker, as well as the victory points you can gain. While the Citadel gives you a lot of points when you start the game off, and it does increase in value every round, you can actually make these other spaces start getting a lot of point values as well. You can start stacking these guys up. If you had a big stack like this here, uh, it would be a three-pointer on top, and then you'd have an additional four cards underneath, or five. This could be up to eight, seven points at the end of the game, which could be even more or the same as the Citadel itself. Now, yes, fighting or vying for the Citadel is very important, and it can be the game winner for you if you can control it two or three times, especially in th that many times you can win that way. Um, the game looks complex. It looks like a lot of stuff going on, but it's actually very simple. There's a lot of spaces here that represent where you're placing your, your different minions across the game board or your workers, and they're a little different in type. So once you get that base, like the basic areas you can place your workers down, the rest of the game flows very easy. In fact, this game says an hour to two hours, and at four players, I would imagine that would be the two hour mark. We played this game first time with the understanding of like, we, we, we went through it all and we understood it all in about an hour and 15 minutes or so. So that just tells you how streamlined this game is. It's very simple to understand and what you need to do. The complexity comes in the combat. Choosing which combat card you have. Knowing that you might have less value than your opponent does, because maybe you started off with a low valued area, you might want to play a higher combat card. Or maybe you want to choose to lose on purpose so you can return warriors from your graveyard back to your hand and uh, they are not going to gain as much of a benefit as you losing your strongest card while they play their strongest card. So it's a bit of push your luck or deception. There's some social aspects to the game too. Noticing who's farther ahead in victory points based on how many different areas they control. Knowing how many points a player is going to get at the end of the round and that might help you decide where you're placing your minions in order to enact a battle. 
The fact that each of the areas has little battle spaces that are easy to understand, like this this fits my worker. It's, you have to understand that these areas here fit, fit the workers that have the battle spaces. And so do the big circles, and then so does this little circle area over here, and that this is in a four, three to four player game. Now once you, that's pretty much the only complexity, I suppose, of the game. Placing down fighters is also cool because if you have fighters of the same color, like for instance, if I have these, the six and the four, they're expensive, but once you get them, they're amazing. The six and the four is 10, but because they're both yellow, that's going to net me an extra one, 11. If you've got a space that has 11, that space is never going to be beaten, especially if it's a space around the game board, not the Citadel. Now, it's, I mean, it, it can be beaten, right? Somebody else can drop higher value, but a pretty strong defense is always a good offense in this game. There's a space, like I said, that you can get a gold. This Usually when you want to get gold, it's because you want to buy these towers here. But most of the time it's better to fight because there are a lot of cards, a lot of fighting cards that are going to give you value. This one here gives you two gold whenever you win the fight three gold whenever you win the fight, two gold whenever you lose the fight, two gold whenever you lose the fight, and one gold whenever you win the fight. So there's plenty of ways to gain gold in combat. There is a cost for potentially losing victory points, or if you are the attacker, potentially losing units that you could use to try and gain victory points. But it's this quickest and maybe not safest way of getting gold, but you can also gain value from it. Now, if you want to be on the safe side, you pick one of these guys up. Most of the different towers are going to cost maybe one or two. I don't even think there's a three in here. Yeah, one or two is for most of these guys. You'll gain the benefits of these, so purchasing these buildings is very important because not only do you get the location if it's unoccupied, get the valuable resources, but you can also defend it and then score victory points at the end. So like I said, gathering these is important. Okay, so let's talk about the ideas of the game. This is a worker placement, area control game with some unique combat. All three of these work very well and they combine very well as well. The quality of the game. This has wonderful quality. Everything is well detailed, well organized, and you understand what you're doing throughout the game. You know what you need to do as you move along, and you're also not confused by any of the game's graphic design, which is excellent. The art is stylized, it's unique, and it's very cool. All the characters feel vibrant and alive, and they're just a little cartoony, but in a good way. And I really like the stylization. Everything kind of fits together with this game. The landscape and the characters and the design and the graphic, de uh, the graphic design has this kind of noir sense to it, which makes sense based on the game's uh, publishing company. And um, the the miniatures, the little, the, the little meeples here, are really cute as well. Even the first player marker was a good choice. So overall, the quality of the game, the artwork of the game is very, very solid. The ability to if form combat, to form bonds with players that are lower down on the, the ranking and fight against the big, the big Wambo Bambo boss who's got tons and tons of victory points because they control all these areas is a good way to balance the game out. The game always stays balanced based on the players working together in tandem up until the point where they don't want to anymore. Uh, I loved placing down buildings. I loved giving myself additional points. We played this game uh, multiple times, once today and two more times even after the stream. So we got a good four playthroughs in this. We played with four, uh, four, three, and then I even played a two player game today just to see how it would feel. So I know everything about the game pretty much um, with a few rules exceptions. You can actually watch the playthrough of us playing this game and watch everybody enjoying themselves, where it be from the newer, newer gamers that we had on the stream and the more hardcore gamers that we had as well. Everyone really enjoyed this game. If you like a worker placement, you like a little bit of combat and area control, then Crown of Ash is definitely one I would suggest. It has a lot of cool, unique concepts. It's very simple and straightforward as to how it plays, but with a lot of unique strategy and with the addition of combat cards, it has a lot of potential. I think this game is going to do very well. I have to give it a score because I was asked to in the comments, so I'm gonna give this a solid uh, it was be, if you are a fan of these type of games, this is going to be a solid 8 to maybe 8.5. Otherwise, it's going to be anywhere between the 7 to 8 ratio if you're more on the like, eh, is this going to be a game that's interesting enough for me to want to play? But if you like these type of games, it's going to do really well. I'm very excited to see what this game is like. And if you're interested, there's a link down below to check out Crown of Ash because I, I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Crown of Ash. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said, there's a link down below where you can take a look. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday on Whatnot and Sunday on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. It is going to be, um, Whatnot will be in the link in the description. And then 
the other ones, it's also 6.30, you know, you can watch them anywhere you want because they're everywhere. <laughs> the website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to comment and subscribe if you think we've earned your subscription. If you watched more than one of our videos here, please do consider it. We'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to not hearing a motorcycle in my background uh, and, and de defending the, the crown, getting the crown of ash with, with, you, with you next time. Yeah. <laughs>